Cardiac Development by Lisa McCabe. Hello, my name is Lisa McCabe. I'm a clinical nurse specialist at Children's Hospital Boston in the cardiovascular program. Fetal Development. During the first week of fetal life, the fertilized egg develops into a blastocyte and implants in the mother's uterus. During the second week of fetal life, the blastocyte implants deeper into the uterine wall and a primitive placenta begins to form. During the third week of fetal life, the primitive umbilical cord develops. Also at this time, the blastocyte develops into a three-layer disc. The three layers are the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Specific body systems will develop from each layer. The endoderm, or inner layer, gives rise to the primitive intestinal tube, mucous membranes, glands, lung buds, urinary tract, and yolk sac. The mesoderm, or middle layer, gives rise to the heart and vascular system, the dermis, subcutaneous tissue, muscles, skeleton, sex glands, lymph glands, kidneys, connective tissue, and blood cells. And finally, the ectoderm, or outer layer, gives rise to the epidermis, hair, sebaceous glands, sweat glands, and nervous system. Cardiogenesis. Early in the development, the primitive heart develops as two tubes that merge into one tube. The single tube begins to swell and develop into various anatomic features of the heart. The heart begins to beat by week three. In normal cardiac development, the cardiac tube will twist and turn on itself in a rightward direction. This is called dextral looping. This results in the right ventricle developing on the right side of the heart and the left ventricle developing on the left side of the heart. Abnormal looping in a leftward direction is called levo looping. This results in the right ventricle developing on the left side of the heart and the left ventricle developing on the right side of the heart. Entering into the fourth week of fetal life, the atrial septum and ventricular septum begins to form. The atrial septum grows in layers and includes the tissues of septum primum, septum secundum, and endocardial cushion tissue. The endocardial cushion tissue is located in the middle of the heart. From this tissue arises the tricuspid valve, mitral valve, part of the atrial septum, and part of the ventricular septum. Septum primum grows downward between the right and left atrium and eventually fuses with the endocardial tissues. The septum secundum grows parallel to the septum primum. Both septum primum and septum secundum develop with holes in them to create a passageway for blood to flow from right atrium to left atrium through the foramenal valley. As long as the pressures on the right atrium are higher than pressures in the left atrium, the passage will stay open to allow the blood to flow from right to left. Errors may occur during atrial septation. A secundum atrial septal defect is an opening in the middle of the atrial septum produced when the tissue of septum primum does not reach septum secundum adequately to completely close the wall or when a tiny hole is left in the septum primum as the tissues grow. A primum atrial septal defect is an opening in the lower part of the atrial septum near the tricuspid and mitral valves. It results from problems in the growth of the endocardial cushion tissues. A defect here is often associated with a defect in the mitral valve, as well as tricuspid valve. The most severe form of this is an atrioventricular canal defect. The aorta and pulmonary artery develop from a single tubular structure, the truncus arteriosus. 
two areas of thickened tissue project into the lumen of this tube on the right and left side. As they continue to grow in size, these ridges meet and fuse to form a septum which takes a spiral course toward the end of this tube. This septum divides the truncus into two vessels, the aorta and the pulmonary artery. The conal tissue involved in the septation of the truncus arteriosus also directs placement of the aorta and pulmonary artery over their related ventricles. By the fifth week of fetal life, the atria completely separate into the right atrium and left atrium. Also at this time, the ventricular septum continue to grow in size. The muscular portion of the ventricular septum develops from the apex of the common ventricle. The membranous septum develops from the endocardial cushion tissues. Conal tissue contributes to the complete closure of the septum between the aortic and pulmonary valves. By the sixth and seventh week of fetal life, the ventricular septum completely separate into the right ventricle and left ventricle. Errors may occur during ventricular septation. Muscular defects can occur in any portion of the muscular septum. Small defects often close on their own as the tissues develop. Membranous defects are located behind the septal leaf of the tricuspid valve. Subpulmonary defects are caused by deficiency of the conal septum. Atrioventricular canal type defects are caused by defects in the endocardial cushion tissues of the intraventricular septum. Arch formation. The aorta and pulmonary artery and their branching vessels are formed from the brachial arch arteries. Initially, there are six pairs of brachial arch arteries. The first, second, and fifth pairs disappear, forming ligaments that hold the heart in place. The third aortic arch forms the common carotid artery and internal carotid artery. The fourth aortic arch forms part of the final aortic arch, as well as the proximal portion of the right subclavian artery. The sixth aortic arch produces the proximal segment of the branch pulmonary arteries, the ductus arteriosus, and provides pulmonary blood flow via the branch that develops lung buds. Errors may occur in arch formation that result in the following defects. Coarctation of the aorta, interrupted aortic arch, aortic atresia, patent ductus arteriosus, and vascular ring. In just a few short weeks, the human heart has undergone major development. By the third week of fetal life, the heart is beating. By day 44, the fetal heart resembles the postnatal heart in structure and function. It will continue to grow and develop over the next 30 to 32 weeks. Many of the features that may result in a heart defect, however, have also begun to develop. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.